Now, when I left Lucasfilm in 1992, I started a company called Humongous Entertainment. And we made games for kids. And they weren't just any games, but they were adventure games. They were games like Puppet Saves a Zoo and Freddy Fish and Pajama Sam. Now, the whole idea of starting a company that made games for, adventure games for kids came from one event, and that was watching a five-year-old play Monkey Island. Now, at five years old, he couldn't read. And this was before voicing games, so he had no idea what was happening in the, in the story or the game. Now, he couldn't even read the verbs at the bottom of the screen. But since it was a pure point-and-click game, all he had to do was move the mouse pointer around and click on things and see what happened. He soon figured out that clicking on one verb and then clicking on the door would open it, and clicking on another verb and clicking on the door would close it, or clicking on this other verb and clicking on something on the ground would add it to your inventory. Now, this five-year-old would spend hours walking around Melee Island clicking on stuff, and he was getting nowhere in the story, and he had no idea what was happening. But it was fascinating, and it completely absorbed him. And I have no doubt that he made up a completely different story for what was happening, but he was happily lost in that world. Now, it's important to understand, this is around 1992, and kids have not had the same exposure to computers they have today. And this was all new, and it was different, and he really loved it. And it got me thinking. It's like, what if I made adventure games just for kids? Not dumbed-down adventure games or crappy edutainment games, but real adventure games, simplified and done with full voice. And I was convinced that like, kids and parents would absolutely love them. Now, the first game we made was about a talking purple car called Papa Joins the Parade. Now, when we finished that, we made another game called Papa Goes to the Moon and then Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise. And kids loved these games, and they loved adventure games. It's like they didn't know they were adventure games. They were just fun stories with characters where they had to think and solve problems. Now, a year later, we started working on a new game with a new character called Freddy Fish. Now, if you look at the screenshots for Papa Joins the Parade, you notice that the art and graphics are very much in the same vein as Monkey Island or just about any other game at the time. They're just built on pixels. Now, about halfway through the production of Freddy Fish, I went to this conference, and I saw a talk given by someone from another game company, and he was making games for kids. I don't remember the company or the game, but the guy giving the talk showed some of the art and how it was all hand-drawn on paper, and then it was scanned in like traditional film animation. And it was stunning. It had a completely different feel to it. It was still made of pixels, but these were sexy pixels. I had never seen a game do this before, not for kids or adults. And when I sat in this talk, the stream of panic enveloped me. It's like what we were doing could not compare to this. In that one instant, everything we were doing seemed old and dated. And when I got back to the office, I gathered up all the artists, and I told them what I had seen, and I asked them if they thought we could do the same thing. Now, none of, them have, none of them had any classic training in animation, but they jumped on it. It's like we did a few tests, and they looked absolutely amazing. At this point, we scrapped all of the art in the game and completely started over. It's like we kept the design and the story, and, and the script, but every piece of art was scrapped, from animation to backgrounds, and we completely started over. We wrote all new tools for dealing with the art and completely revamped our engine. The first three games we did sold well, but when Freddy Fish came out, it was a huge hit, and it really was our breakout game. It got gate reviews, and the art and animation was really singled out. It was the game that put Humongous Entertainment on the map, and we became a company that was known for our art and animation. Now, if you were an artist in Seattle at the time, it really was the place you wanted to work. It's like we had the best of the best. And all of that because I went to a conference and I saw a game that scared the crap out of me. I don't know if that game ever came out, but it scared me and it challenged me and it jolted me out of complacence and it made us better. You should always be looking for things that make us better, looking for ideas that challenge our thinking and try to tear away at our view of the world. And as creators, we should seek out things, seek out things that are different and scary. Ideas that make us afraid are wonderful sources of inspiration.